any single other game that you've ever entered in life, whether it's a game of Snap, or it's a, a game of Thrones, or whatever popular games are these days, have you never asked what the rules are? set up in such a way that we've entered a position where we are trying to get through this labyrinth of consciousness that God has created in the best way possible to come out of the other side having won the game. We will talk about what some basic tips are for the game. Okay? So what I've got here are the 14 most important tips for the game of life. Life is a game and just like any other entertaining and challenging pursuit, there are a few things that you should remember. One, this game is virtual reality. It is not real. Number one, this game is virtual reality and it is not real. Number two, this game is going to stop. Number three, what you experience in the game is temporary. Number four, you should know who is judging the game and what they are judging you on. Number five, you should learn the rules and the laws of the game and understand the consequences of breaking it. You should understand the rules and the laws of the game that you're playing and understand the consequences of breaking it. You should approach the game with a strategy, with a plan, with a strategy, as well as the openness to enjoy yourself. You should not seek to harm, cheat or steal from any other person playing the game, nor to seek unfair advantages. These are your rules. You should know if there is an opposition to your quest, you should know what your opponent's strengths and weaknesses are. Number nine. You can engage in healthy competition in this game, but you should choose your battles wisely. Number 10. You should try to win the game fairly. And you should learn how. Number 11. You should learn from others who have won. Number 12, you should practice what you learn until your techniques are near perfect. But you should avoid despondency, depression, negativity and despair while you are still honing your skills. Really important. Number 13, before you begin, you should be able to define what you consider internal and external success and failure to be. And number 14, you should not seek to build or destroy your true being based on what happens in the game. Remember these 14 tips and you have every chance of winning. So I've explained to you that the world that we live in, this delusion, this mire, is a game, it's not a reality. It appears as one just as an excellent game that you're seeing, a virtual reality game. But guys, in any single other game that you've ever entered in life, whether it's a game of Snap, or it's a, a game of Thrones, or whatever popular games are these days, have you never asked what the rules are? Have you not thought, I'm not gonna start until I know what the rules are? Who's judging me? What my opponents are? What their strengths are? Don't you calculate and understand the entirety of what you're about to do? Your life is there and you don't understand. Your life is in a game. It's in the mix of a situation 
and you don't know even who the judge is and what they're looking for. You don't know what you consider success or failure. And on top of that, you will judge yourself on how you do, even though you don't know what doing good really is. So that's why I say to you, before you get so engrossed in the game and get lost in it and think it's, because it's a virtual reality, it's so damn real. But nothing is real. This note here is not there. And that's not me, a mental yogi, telling you. It's the masters of science telling you that we've tried to break down an atom, and guess what? There's nothing there. There are no solids on this planet. It's all vibrating matter. It's strings. They've got it down to string theory. Nuclear physics, quantum physics. They'll tell you there's nothing in it. It's just empty. It's just vacuous. Yogic science will tell you what that vacuum is. It will tell you it's a point in space that we know of and what's beyond it is spirit. We know in yogic science that the spirit has created the atom and we know that, the chronospatial unit. And we're all sitting on this chronospatial unit and we're conscious of it because God is sitting in us watching it. But the entire thing is made up by spirit. And you're in this game. But you don't know the rules. So what are you doing? You're following your heart's instinct, you're trying to do what's right, but there are actual rules, there are actual ways of getting through, actual ways. And if you follow the ways of the yogis and the masters that have come before us who have entered and ended the game with faith and trust and wisdom, you will get to the end of it and you'll see what it was all about. And it's amazing when you get to the end of it and you understand it. Then you realise what's going on and then those that reach the end of it will be one with the creator of the game and they can play the game. They can create parts of the game. They can build parts of the game. They can build parts of creation. And everything man ever makes in this world is a, is a mimic of what God is doing to all of us. So when we make a virtual reality game, it's a tiny, when we make a camera, it's a tiny part of what God does with everything. So you're just exhibiting part of his nature anyway, everything you create and do, but you're discovering it slowly. And I told you time was cyclical, that the yogis 11,500 years ago and beyond have, have discovered the answer to the game and the answers are coming back round to you. Cyclical as time works. But you guys are lucky because you have a chance to pick that information up now. Those who are studying yoga properly, they have the chance to understand the information now. And knowledge, 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 love, love, love. Wisdom, 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 love, love, love. Balance, male, female, hot, cold, sun, moon. We're supposed to understand two things. Science of truth, science of yoga, ration, reason, intelligence, truth, love, compassion, mercy, forgiveness. is two limbs that will get you through this world. The, the thing I'm talking about is understand the mind side and understand the rules of where you are, the structure of what you're in. And then, as you do, you follow your instincts of love. That's fantastic. But use your mind to understand where you are. The reason why Chi Kri has done what is why I've done all this study of reading scripture after scripture. This weekend I spent three, four hours reading, driving my head crazy, reading the deepest books. And going deep into science, no, uh, Indian science. Because I knew that it's important for you guys. Because we have reason minds in this world, in the West. People ask questions, they don't have just faith alone. They have questions too. Questions that they need answered in Western science, physics terms. And if you don't know those rational answers, then that rational part of your brain is not fired up. It's not, it's going to doubt because you have an entitlement to ask questions. But I have answers. And that's what the yogi must learn is the answers to everything, physics, science, Geography, astrology, astronomy. Know your world. Know the game. So I want you to spend time just using that simple question I've asked you. Would I ever play a game without knowing the rules? Would I not just say, hold on guys, I want to learn about the game. I want to read the rule book first. Just give me a couple of hours let me read the book, I'll come back to it. And then let me understand how to play it. And 
wants those to live there. That's what I'm saying to you, is, is read your rule book. Learn the tips. Those who have won, find who they are and learn them. Learn from them. And that's what religion is. It's the human way, it's the human saying, does somebody know? And then Christ, Buddha, Prophet Muhammad, whoever says, I've done it. I know the answer. And of course, people from all cultures will know the answer. And they go and teach their people. Because people are looking for the, the, the tips, the rules. That's what religion is. It's a bunch of tips to get through life. Okay, here's what we do, guys. What I'm saying to you is not weird. It's not asking a lot of you. It's what you should be doing more of. Why yoga is yoga, and why this is different, is because yoga is quite dry of any religion or culture. It's just, it's, it's metaphysics, it's, it's formulas, it's the way to do things, but it's dry. So you take it away. Take and apply to any culture or religion. It work. Same place. I'll pick out a few of these which I think are quite notable. Um, I think note number four is very important. Know who's judging you and what they're judging you on. So you are having a tennis match, for example. And I say to you, life is a tennis match. You go that side, you go that side. So you start playing. But you don't know who's sitting in the umpire's chair and you don't know what they're looking for. But you play anyway. And you argue about what's in and what's out. But you don't actually know what success is, or you're just playing the game because you're in it now, and everyone's in it, everyone's playing. If you play. Then after a while of playing the game, you get so many ins that are outs and lose some of the games you start to go to where, where, where is this umpire? Is there an umpire? Where is he? And you go and you start asking him. That's like asking God in life. What are your rules? Can you show me? And the umpire says, I'm busy. But here's a book. Read it. Or well, he passes it to his assistant, Christ. Christ passes it to his assistant, it's called the Bible, read it. Or well, here, you pass it to Yogananda, Yogananda passes it, here's some lessons on yoga, read them. You understand what's going on in this game. Then go play, you might win a few more games. I'm giving you logic. That's how you play it. You should know if there's any opposition to your quest and what the strength of that point is. If you've ever heard of something called the Mahabharat, which is what I work and study on a lot. The battle between good and evil in India that happened many years ago. A battle on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. One army of good, one army of bad tendencies. Good tendencies versus bad is more metaphorical in some respects. We are going through that battle and the opponent is our ego and our ego's tendencies. Right? So, but we need to understand that our greatest enemy lies within us. It's a part of ourselves. So if we don't understand the way that we behave when we're opposing our own development or when we get angry for no reason, when we're getting jealous, when we're getting greedy, when we're getting this, if we don't analyse and watch ourselves and stop ourselves from triggering the wrong way or take away the um, driving forces that make us that way, then our opponent is beating us every time because we're not really checking them out. So you've, you've got to analyse the opposition and control it. Like you, you, you like chocolate or you like something, you have a sweet tooth and you don't understand every time you go for it. Maybe there's a certain time of the month that you want it more. Maybe it's because you keep buying packets and leaving them in the fridge that you eat them. So you've got to understand maybe I send someone else shopping, maybe I don't get them just because they're on discount. You know, I, I, I understand myself better. I use wisdom to control myself. Understand your opponent. Understand my opponent. The whole process of delusion and then outwit it bit by bit. So, in the final one, I'll pick up on was you learn from people that know and you practice your techniques. But if you didn't get it right, when you haven't perfected your skills, don't get into depression or despondency and give up. Forgive yourself. While you're learning, of course you're not going to hit the target. Who's going to hit the target when they pick up the bow for the first time? They're not going to hit the target the first time. But they don't sit and cry, they're no good. You keep going. That's what the yogis do. That's what you do. That's what yoga practitioners do. Keep going. Keep trying. Keep getting there. Then one day you hit the bullseye, but if you give up in the middle, you'll never get there. But I always think people are going to remember women when they die. They remember. When they're suddenly floating at their body, and they, they're suddenly floating, and they remember, ah, oh, this is what it is. So none of that mattered. It really was a game. There was nothing. I'm just light. I'm just floating around the universe. There, there was nothing. And that's gone, and the world is finished, what happened? Oh my god, now I've got all this catching up to do.
Why didn't I just do my study and became Watto's lab? Because what happens after life is done? No, I'm serious. After <coughs> this, when that line of life ends, you can't study anymore. Did you know that? You can't catch up. Because that line is drawn. And the angel said, now, nah, finished. Now you're in the astral world. You can't catch up on the stuff you were told in, in the physical world. You, you need to do it then. Now you've got to go back into your life again. And if it's that case, then there are things that you don't like in your life right now that you want to never experience again or never go through again. If you haven't done it, you can't realize it after. You, you'll just go back into the same body, the same thing. And I've explained that to you before. So this is why I'm so hard on you guys and everybody. It's because do it now. Hate me for it. Hate the work for it. But do it for yourself. So you never have to go through it again. So just remember that. that you'll have a, and I'll have it too. A cut off. And that's it. No chance to. No, no chance for redemption. Or improvement in your levels. Or in your next gun. You need to have dealt with it. So that's it. Those are my 14 tips. Enjoy your time in the game.